G'day Cobbers, welcome back to the bush. In this one we'll be checking out snatch blocks and how they work from first principles. Whether they be the new style snatch ring with a soft shackle or the old style split sheave snatch block. Let's get into it. Now one important concept to get it across is a snatch block is essentially a spinning lever. And always with mechanical advantage, our input distance is divided by our output distance. And it's important to remember, it depends on how the snatch block is rigged as to whether it provides mechanical advantage or not. Let's have a look at the levers. First, let's check out a class one lever. So as you can see, we have a pair of scissors here and up the cutting end, we have the resistance, the fulcrum or the pivot point is in the center there and on the handle is the effort in and obviously that's where you provide the effort. Works just like a beam. So we have the resistance up this end, two meters in we have the fulcrum or the pivot point and up the top here we have the effort end. So if we put 10 kilograms of the resistance and 10 kilograms on the effort, because there's two meters apart from each other, we will be in equilibrium because mechanical advantage equals your input distance divided by your output distance and two divided by two of course is one. It works just like a snatch block. So on a snatch block, we have resistance of let's say 10 kilograms and our anchor point leads down to our fulcrum point here and our effort end is 10 kilograms. So in this circumstance, the snatch block will be in equilibrium and we don't have any mechanical advantage. Okay, now let's have a chat about class two levers. As you can see in our wonderful diagram of wheelbarrow here, we have the effort up one end where you put your hands on the handle. Our load is right in the middle there or our resistance and our fulcrum is our pivot point and that's in the center of the wheel there. It relates back to our beam just as in class one lever. But this time we have the effort up on the left hand side, our resistance two meters in in the middle and our fulcrum on that beam will be our pivot point right on the right hand side there. Always our mechanical advantage is our input distance divided by our output distance. And our input distance in this case is from our effort to our fulcrum. And that'll be a total of four meters. Our output distance is our resistance to our fulcrum. And that's a total of two meters. Four divided by two, of course, is two. So that provides a mechanical advantage of two. If we relate that back to our snatch block, we have our fulcrum or pivot point here. It's moved over to the right-hand side. Our resistance is in the middle there, and our effort is on the left-hand side. So if we provide 10 kilograms of effort there, and our fulcrum is over here, we'll have a mechanical advantage of two, providing 20 kilograms of effort there at our resistance point. So if we relate that back to our wheelbarrow, our fulcrum point is in the middle there, our resistance halfway down, and our effort. So we'd have 20 kilograms of resistance there, and 10 kilograms of effort at the handle. And that's how a class two lever works. Now, it might be a bit of an effort to remember how all the levers work in the field. So there are three general rules that will work for you. First one being a static block or a fixed block doesn't usually provide mechanical advantage. However, a moving block will provide mechanical advantage. The exemption of course is if the anchor and effort originate at the vehicle with a static block you'll still get mechanical advantage just as in a double line pull. The first scenario I'd like to look at would be a slingshot winch and in this scenario we have a stuck vehicle which requires at least a thousand kilograms of force to move and our winching vehicle which is providing 1000 kilograms of force from the winch and at our fulcrum point or at our snatch block of course 1000 plus 1000 is 2000. So we have 2,000 kilograms of force on our snatch block and on our tree. So is this a class one or a class two lever? So if we have the effort and the fulcrum in the middle and the resistance on the other side, of course, it's a class one lever and that provides no mechanical advantage. The mechanical advantage is one to one. Okay, the next winching scenario I'd like to look at would be the double line pull. And in this scenario, we have our winching vehicle here providing the effort from our winch running up through a snatch block and back down to an anchor point on the vehicle. So we have a thousand kilograms of effort coming from our winch running up through the snatch block. We have, because we have a thousand kilograms in this line, we have a thousand kilograms of force in this line. And that, because a thousand plus a thousand equals 2000, means we have 2000 kilograms of force at the resistance point. How do we work that out? Is it a class two lever? Is it a class one lever? 
I'm glad you asked. So our fulcrum point has now moved over to the right hand side. Our resistance is at our pivot point and our effort of course is provided by our winch. So the distance from our fulcrum to our resistance is half the distance from our effort to our fulcrum. It's twice the distance. So two divided by one of course is two. So therefore we have a class two lever. The final scenario I'd like to look at will be backwards winching. So in this scenario, we have our vehicle here with a forward mounted winch. It's running up through a static snatch block there, back down through to a static snatch block here, and then running up through to a, a snatch block mounted in the rear recovery point here and back to that tree there. So where does the magic happen? I'm glad you asked. Okay, so if you refer to our previous sections, you'll see this is, is a static snatch block and is providing a mechanical advantage of one. So nothing magic happening there, it's only a redirection. Back down to this snatch block here, again, it's a mechanical advantage of one, class one lever, providing no mechanical advantage. However, this little fella here is a class two lever, and is providing a mechanical advantage of two, and therefore the line will shorten here and will travel backwards. But don't take my word for it. Let's head out in the bush and give it a go. Here we're gonna do some backwards winching and put what we've learned in theory into practice. So what I've set up here is a snatch block up the front, snatch block up the side, and a snatch block at the back of the vehicle, just as in the diagram. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a bit of tension on it first. And then we're gonna check our rigging. Make sure it runs through nice and cleanly. As you can see, we've shortened up the extension winch rope here. We'll show you how to do that if anyone's interested in a later video. And our second class one snatch block, running to our class two snatch block. And that's the one where all the magic will happen. Let's give it a go and see if it works. Okay, now we've checked the tension in the lines and made sure they're all running through the snatch box cleanly. Checked all the rigging, we'll see if it'll go backwards. And that's it, theory into practice, as simple as that. So if you enjoy this video, don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe. Now, if you didn't like the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs down twice. Thanks. I'll see you in the next one. I need them more than one take, mate. Is it, is it rolling? Okay. Backwards winching. As promised at the start of the... Try again. Take two. Take two. As promised at the start of the video, here we're going to do some backwards winching.